Let's take a look at the troubleshooting tasks for the network analyst. Here's just a very short list of some troubleshooting tasks that you may use when you're analyzing network traffic. I'll take you into some examples of these in just a moment. But one of the things you may do is focus on locating any faulty network devices. So we look at devices that maybe aren't answering back or they're answering back with some sort of an error indicating they're having problems or maybe you've got uh, switches along a path that are dropping packets. We also should be able to locate devices or software that has been misconfigured. So we may see that a client believes that another host is a DNS server and the client sends a DNS query out to that host, except that host does not support DNS, it's just a workstation. In that case, we'll see some ICMP message responses coming back to indicate that I don't support services incoming on port 53. We can also measure delays along a path. Now this is called path latency. I'll show you this as an example right now. Let me take you out to a trace file. This trace file is called HTTP-AU101B. So inside of Wireshark, I will select Open a Capture File from the main toolbar. And the file I'm looking for is HTTP-AU101B. Now, if people were complaining about performance going to this particular site, we can look at information in the time column to tell us how much time it takes between a DNS query going out and a DNS response coming back. Now, one of the classes that we will focus on here for the WCNA program and for understanding Wireshark deals with time. In this particular trace file, I can see that the first packet arrived at a zero timestamp and the DNS response came back 75 milliseconds later. We can change the time column setting using View, Time Display Format, and Second Since Previous Displayed Packet. This will allow us to see the time from the end of one packet to the end of the next packet. Now we can get the round trip time between the client and the server. This trace file was captured at the client. We see a SYN packet go out. This is the packet that's going out to establish the TCP handshake to the server. And the SYNAC came back 16 milliseconds later. In fact, using Wireshark, we can sort the time column and go to the top of the column to find the largest delays in the trace file. In the course that focuses on time, that course is called Define Time Values and Interpret Summaries, we'll be looking at how to use this time column and how to add additional time columns to help us spot delays in a trace file. Going back to our list, we also want to be able to locate the point of packet loss. And I'll just give you a hint that 99.9999999999% of the time packet loss occurs at an infrastructure device. So you're typically looking for a switch or a router or maybe even a firewall or natting device that is dropping packets. We also look for various other types of network errors or any service refusals from an application. Let me take you out to another trace file where we'll look for network errors and packet loss. This time I'll open up a trace file called HTTP-Download101D. We can see right away that there are some problems, and that's because Wireshark's expert system is indicating that we have an acknowledgement for a segment that we didn't see. We didn't see the data, but we have an acknowledgement. Then we have an indication of packet loss, previous segment not captured. In the bottom left-hand corner in Wireshark, we have the expert info button. 
When we click this button, it brings up the Expert Infos window and tells us how many errors, warnings, notes that we may have. If we click on the Warnings tab, we can see that we have some packet loss in this trace file. If we expand the section and click on one of the packets, Wireshark takes us to that point in the trace file. Under the Notes tab, again, we can see a number of retransmissions and fast retransmissions in the trace file. Again, we can right mouse click to expand that section and then select each area in the trace file to focus in on that moment. One of the courses in this series is Use Wireshark's Expert System, and I highly recommend that you go out and take and complete that entire course. Now we've taken a quick look at some of the troubleshooting tasks for the network analyst. In the next section, we'll take a look at some of the security tasks for the network analyst.